All right, everybody. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to go over real quick on how to put an N54 intake manifold onto the N52 here. So, <clears throat> obviously, this is the N52 intake manifold. I'm just going to go over real quick like uh, what the differences are and what you have to do to make this work. Um, luckily, the N52 is pretty good at running... Um, you know, with like a bad intake management, like if you have any leaks, like exhaust or uh, intake manifold leaks on the gaskets, it doesn't really matter because this engine can can pretty much run without an, a manifold on it as well. Um, but of course, you're not gonna have throttle control. So yeah, I'm gonna go over real quick the difference between the N54 and N52 intake manifolds and throttle bodies. <clears throat> So, and how you can put it on your N52 to get more power, because this is obviously direct flow. It flows straight in and through, and this one flows in, wraps around, does some weird stuff. So, to start off, the N54 intake manifold, the bolt pattern on, on it compared to the N52 is a little bit different. Um, I went ahead and made this gas, or I, not a gasket, I just did this cutout of paper. I traced the N52. Um, manifold and I <clears throat> marked where the holes are so you can see right here it lines up with the ports and lines up with the holes where it bolts on and when you put this on the N54 when you line up the ports all of the bolt holes are a little bit higher a couple millimeters higher so if you bolt it on the N54 just like this the holes would line up but the ports would not match the ports on the engine so it would restrict flow it would cause turbulent air and it would kind of defeat the purpose of putting this on for better airflow so uh, as you can see I haven't modified this N54 intake manifold at all and it slides on it slides on easy just like that you can kind of see a gap up here at the top where it um, would suppose like it would it should line up with that um, or the other N52 manifold lines up but this one doesn't so to get the correct um, <clears throat> to get the correct fit for the N54 pretty much what you have to do is on these little rings you want to cut pretty much the whole top part of this ring so you want to cut like pretty much straight up until you get to the plastic part so you want to cut like the top portion of all of these rings and that will allow it to line up the same way this intake manifold does as for the ports though these are all the same so you won't have to there's no gasket really like there, this is a paper one I just cut out myself there's no gasket that you could gasket match the ports to the head so that would make it hard if this was different. I know like the older 3 series models people will put the M50 intake manifold on the M54 because it is more direct and has bigger runners so they pretty much sometimes will port. Some people don't care about porting and gasket matching the head. But on this, in this case you don't have to. You just have to drill out. So what I'm going to do is take a Dremel and Dremel out the top of these and then kind of make it smooth and drill through so that the manifold can sit flush and have direct airflow with no lip on the inside from between the manifold and head. Alright now the with the rest of it here are the throttle bodies. Here I'll flip it around so it is the same. This is the N54 throttle body, this is the N52 throttle body. They are the same size, believe it or not. So the holes line up as well so you could put an N52 or N54 throttle body on either manifold it wouldn't matter this one's obviously metal this one's plastic um, I'm sure this one's built for boost and this one is not um, and so that's like the main differences in what you can tell on this so this you can see like a coupler will go over that and like you lock it down and it'll hold boost this it doesn't really need to hold boost they just have a little bit of a fitting to put it on and um, this is a fitting um, I'm pretty sure it's it's this right here so this fits on this came off the N52 
and that clips on the N54. But originally, this was on this hose. Now I can't get it off. Whatever. That hose fits onto the N52 manifold right here. So instead of having it having this port on the throttle body on the N52, it is on the throttle body on the N54. So you won't have to worry about that. Um, <clears throat> if you are doing a 330i, you will have to tune down pretty much to a 328 because of the um, disavalve disavalve um, connection and tuning. So that pretty much is. This wire right here, I zip tied it so I knew I didn't have to worry about plugging it in. It usually just hangs. Uh, it comes on the N52 um, because they didn't want to like make a whole new harness without it, so they just left it included. That's why you can 330 manifold swap for the disavalves. Um, but if you're swapping from 330 to N54, then you'll have to pretty much detune or get a custom tune so that you don't get a error error for dis disavalves. <clears throat> so, what else is there? Um, pretty much everything else will plug in. Everything plugs in the right way. Um, on this, there's a bracket right here where, like, just some stuff down there clips onto. But with this, you're going to have way more room, and that clip is right here. So, it's a little bit different positioning. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to, like, move it around. And then, also, on this manifold, you have this vacuum hose. Um... I will be turboing this car pretty soon here, so I'm going to leave that, and uh, I might block it off and just put like something over it to close it off for now, but I will probably be running that to my tile blow-off valve pretty soon here. And then this is the map sensor for the N54. Um, I'm just going to leave it plugged in. I'm going to tighten that down, but have it unplugged. Um, the N52 is not going to care about reading this, so I'm just going to plug it in so I don't have any vacuum leaks. And then on the N52, probably the biggest difference you have to worry about um, is here. These are the crankcase ventilation hoses that return into the manifold. The N54 does not have that. So that is these two hoses right here. Um, mine is dripping some weird stuff because it's, I don't know, it's all like crystallize in there for some reason. So I'm going to clean that up before I put this back on. And um, I tried to take this hose off because it felt like it was twisting, but it, I broke it. And this is that hose. Oh, I you know this is this is part of it, but to the manifold side. Anyways, I think I lost it. But this hose is all gunked up with like weird crap. So pretty much like I'm going to use a catch can. Um, I was gonna go get hose, but I got too lazy. I didn't want to drive too far. So I'm pretty much just gonna like put a Gatorade bottle or something zip tied up here and stick that hose in it for now. Uh, we'll do a catch can system in a little bit. <clears throat> so yeah, that's pretty much like the difference. You don't want to plug this back into the N54 intake manifold, um, especially if you're boosting it, because then it'll just put pressure into your crankcase because the manifold will see pressure. But everything else will plug in. Like don't worry about the DISA plugins. The throttle body um, connector is the same on both throttle bodies. And other than that, um, so yeah, that's like the biggest things right there is the crankcase ventilation return or, yeah, return into the manifold. You want to route that somewhere else, do a catch can, something, um, dump it on the ground. I don't know, probably not good, but. And then the um, bolt side, the bolt holes to get, get it to line up. And other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. You're going to have to figure out hosing from the throttle body to your airbox so that you can still use your mass airflow sensor. Mass airflow sensor plugs in on the airbox. So you don't have to worry about switching that over. You just kind of leave it uh, and try and en route. So I'm not sure if anybody makes a um, coupler or silicone hose that goes from N54 throttle body to and 52 airbox, but uh, you're just gonna have to come up with something if they don't um, to remove the manifold. There's a bunch of videos about that, so that's why I didn't talk about it. 
Um, it's kind of straightforward. You just unplug everything and take it out. It's a little bit, a little tricky because there's uh, this thing at the bottom here that slides over. So people say to unbolt this bracket. They say to unbolt this bracket with these Torx bits, and that's like pretty. If you can get to them, uh, usually I have Torx bits at my shop, but I'm not at work today, so all my tools are there. So I'm using, you know, just the leftover tools at home. But that plastic part slides over this, so if you can pry those like clips up, you can pull that thing off. But usually those clips are really stubborn, so you might just break them. And if you're swapping over to this one anyway, then that thing isn't gonna have any brackets hold onto anyway, so may as well just break them anyways <clears throat> so I'll do some after videos on if I feel any performance gains in the butt dyno and what the car feels like how it runs any engine codes that might come up and we'll show what those codes are uh, cannot test drive today because it there's about a foot of snow outside and my car is pretty low anyway so thanks for watching this part uh, comment down below if you have any other questions about this and I'll see you guys later all right, guys. Uh, finished the install. Um, so pretty much, I forgot to mention before, this right here was the map sensor on the N54. I took the sensor off the N52 that was right here, and then I also replaced the. This was so. This is the map sensor, the N54 map sensor. And then um, it had an O-ring right here. I also put that onto the N52, so it would be because it was a tighter fit, it was more snug. So I'm not afraid of that having any boost leak or anything. And then connectors plugged in. So yeah, I forgot to mention that before, but everything else is uh, plugged in. And I just fired it up um, for a couple minutes. No engine codes. Uh, I have not driven it yet, so I'll let you guys know. Um, so yeah, pretty much everything in here is pretty pretty cleaned up. There's a lot of open space now, like there's a lot of space, like you can see down there. Um, I routed this new catch, um, the crankcase ventilation hose um, to this can right here, so it'll catch anything um, that I might, I don't know, that it might build up instead of taking it back into the manifold. Um, but yeah, everything fits up. And by the way, those sleeves on the holes on the manifold, there's those me that metal part, those sleeves pop out. So if you hit them with like a punch or like a screwdriver and a hammer, um, they'll slide out. And then you can literally just like cut the top part of it so that it makes like a U shape and then slide it back in. And then pretty much what you want to do when you bolt up the manifold is bolt it up and have it slid and pushed down as far as you can so that those runners all line up with the head so yeah pretty much that's it and then for the boot system I tried making my OEM boot fit um, but it was not gonna fit um, it was kinda close like I could get it up and under there but I couldn't get this part to come up and face the air box so I could still have my mass airflow sensor right here so I did not use this. I got this other. Um, I got this other intake thingy, ducting hose, something. It's like really adjustable. It's all like accordion like, and um, it it bends and flows pretty nice. The inside of it is a lot better than I thought. Like it's a lot smoother. And that comes with these couplers that fit over here, so I can connect to my air stock air box. So that's what I did. I got that at Advanced Auto Parts, um, just cause uh, I just I was gonna go like do some research, but I was like, ah, frick it. So I just pulled up to a parts store, and then I found that at the first one. So and it worked. So yeah, that's the setup now. No engine codes. It works. Runs. Drives. Um, and the next part of the video is going to be me driving it and showing you guys how this thing feels. Okay guys, so I got a new GoPro, um, and I'm trying to figure it out still. I did all the things that YouTube videos told me to do on how to set it up, and I started recording the driving video, and I lost like the first half of it. So pretty much in the first half, I was talk 
being about was the manifold and that it was pretty easy to install and that it does pick up good power um, low and high and I talk a little bit more about that and then when the where the video picks up I'm talking about where um, the bolts and nuts go through the manifold where you bolt it to the block so pretty much those little um, sleeves in the N54 is what I'm talking about just to make sure you guys aren't lost right when this video starts but anyways get all of them perfect so that it lines up perfect and pretty much what you want to do anyway is cut off like the top portion of that slide so it makes a U and that would make it so when you bolt the manifold that it slid all the way down and pretty much the bolt that you put through is going to be touching the plastic on top so what you want to do or I'd say what would be really easy is just pop out those pins just pop out those uh, sleeves and then just put the manifold on like don't even put the sleeves back in don't waste your time grinding it because if you can just line it up and bolt it down make sure it's snug where it's supposed to be then it'll be good and the the top part of the bolts are like wide enough that it pushes down on the plastic good so like just be careful not to like over, over torque it or like go crazy like making it all crazy tight like you don't need to do that if you get it like a probably like 10 foot pounds not even that of snugness that manifold isn't moving anywhere like I grabbed it with both hands shake it um, and it does not like have any wiggle or give or anything like that so so yeah I'd recommend if you want to do it the easy way to just take those uh, sleeves out and just bolt, bolt the manifold up the engine bay looks a lot better uh, I'll get a picture of the engine bay I cleaned it cleaned it up it has a lot of room on the manifold side which is really cool you can reach under there if you gotta like access anything um, it looks like you'd also be able to remove and touch the oil filter housing without taking the manifold off which is cool because um, a lot of the tutorials or videos on how to remove that oil filter housing uh, it first thing is taking the manifold off and that's kind of a pain sometimes but anyways so yeah overall I'd say it was pretty worth it like if it feels like it flows good more torquey and responsive low end more more high end I think it just like kind of gives you a better curve on the power band getting a little snowy up here yeah the car just gave me the notification that it's cold out so but yeah for future videos um with for you guys what we're gonna do a little sneak peek We've got a bunch of boxes in the back here and that is the full ECR turbo kit. Um, so I'll be installing that pretty soon here. I just gotta wait for some of the guys to work on their own cars in the shop so I can go with with them. Cause I don't got keys to our shop. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much just waiting on them. And then in May, May 25th, there's a event here in Colorado at Pikes Peak International, a slush event that I'll be driving there. So that'll be like the first time that I'll be able to like beat on the turbo kit. Hopefully it'll be done by then. I hope, I'm sure it will be. It's a couple of months away. Oh yeah, sliding on the rocks here. A little slippery. Altitude up here too, like when you go up higher, you can feel the car kinda, kinda lose its power, it kinda sucks. Cause Canyon driving is pretty sick. But yeah, um, we'll get some pictures here. And thank you guys again for watching. Maybe I'll put like a montage or something here. But we'll see you next time.